So these are the following tests I would put on my basic panel. But let's go through this. So I start out here with uh, blood glucose. Um, blood glucose is obviously an essential element to be running uh, fasting for any patients that you're suspecting have blood sugar dysregulation, which is probably about 90%, I would think. So um, very, very important element to run. BUN, creatinine, and EGFR, these are all elements for kidney disease and kidney dysfunction, a, a condition that I call renal insufficiency. BUN is also used in dehydration. It's used in um, hypochlorhydria as well. Then we have our sodium, potassium, chloride, and CO2. These are our anions and cations, and we can use these four elements to compute the anion gaps. So this is really helpful in looking at, just as a, as a collection of elements, sort of the electrolyte status in the person. Also looking at metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, and so the anion gap is a really good tool for, for sleuthing that out. And then anion gap is really good for thiamine insufficiency. Sodium and potassium are two elements that we look at for adrenal issues. And in my training, I go over a whole module on the adrenals and how you can use sodium and potassium and other various elements to really get a good handle on, on, on that. Uric acid, really good marker for inflammation. Also, from a more pathological perspective, it tells us about gout. And there's a condition called preclinical uh, gout, the sort of the migratory inflammation that happens in our patients, and that could be associated with a high uric acid. Uh, protein, albumin, and down the list here we have globulin. These are really important elements in terms of uh, the GI function, in terms of protein status in the body. And albumin is one of my key markers for looking at liver function. A decreased albumin is a, one of those little signs, hmm, the liver's not functioning properly. Very quite a little bit different from the liver enzymes, but uh, very important, and also for um, oxidative stress as well. Calcium and phosphorus, obviously uh, very important elements in the body. Calcium uh, can tell us about calcium need in the system. Phosphorus is part of a hypochlorhydria pattern, and then you can look at the ratios between the two. Magnesium, I, I include that here because it's relatively inexpensive to order. It's not the best for working out magnesium, but if it is low, then you can um, obviously infer that there might be a magnesium deficiency. In fact, a decreased uh, GGT, I think, is also almost better as a magnesium deficiency marker. <clears throat> Alkaline phosphatase, AST, ALT, and LDH are part of the liver enzyme complex. Alkaline phosphatase is, um, has different isoenzymes that are you know, produced by different uh, organ systems in the body, so we can actually uh, look at bone, or we're looking at liver or gallbladder. It's a really good marker for the gallbladder. Um, low levels of alkaline phosphatase is very important for zinc deficiency. AST, ALT, looking at liver enzymes here, uh, and again, depending on which is high, can tell you which uh, systems of the body are out of balance. LDH, a low LDH I see as a marker for reactive hypoglycemia, and above uh, the optimal range I look at that is tissue inflammation, something's happening on the tissue level, tissue and cellular disruption and that type of thing. These are our gallbladder markers here, bilirubin total, direct and indirect, and the GGT. Um, if, just a little rule of thumb here, if, if you get the total bilirubin and the direct bilirubin or the indirect, you can work out the other one just by subtracting the direct from the total will give you the indirect, or if you're given the indirect but not the direct, you can subtract the indirect from the total and to get the direct. Telling you um, a little bit about uh, uh, liver function, gallbladder function, and also the indirect tells you about red blood cell destruction, spleen health, and that type of thing. GGT, very much associated with the gallbladder, will be increased in any patients that are drinking alcohol. Total globulin is a very important marker for hypochlorhydria and gastric inflammation also an immune marker and an inflammation marker. Iron and ferritin along with, um, actually, no, I don't include that on my basic panel, of course, because it's basic. Iron and serum, iron and ferritin, you know, kind of the basic markers for looking at iron in the body. Um, vitamin D, I think we should all be, all be testing that. And then we get to the lipid panel, cholesterol total, triglycerides, LDL, HDL, and the cholesterol-HDL ratio. 
Again, very important just to kind of see what's happening in the body. And a rule of thumb, you know, just because the cholesterol is high, we have to think in, in, in terms of what is causing an increased cholesterol. And, you know, kind of in my training, I talk about what is cholesterol, what does it do in the body. It's an extremely important uh, nutrient in some ways, and it's an important element in our body involved in many, many functional physiological processes. So, you know, I know that we're not going to just going to be jumping on the uh, let's give a statin of, of a total cholesterol above 200. Triglycerides, again, uh, part of that process too, uh, tied in obviously with the metabolic syndrome, as is uh, uh, LDL and HDL. TSH, um, let's scroll up the top here. TSH is just kind of your very, very basic thyroid marker. In fact, I'm almost tempted not to, to, to include total and uh, T3 and total T4, and if you can afford it, free T3 and free T4, because the TSH, as we know, in so many people, is normal. Even when we tighten those reference ranges up and look at it from a functional optimal perspective, some people with thyroid issues uh, have normal TSH, and I kind of will go through that uh, in, in my trainings and that type of thing. Total white blood cell count is the absolute count of how many white blood cells they see in your blood, and we can follow that up with uh, the differential, which usually is done in percentage. So what percentage of the total white blood cell count is neutrophils and lymphocytes and monocytes and eosinophils and basophils? This really is important for helping us with our immune issues. Uh, monocytes will be elevated in a chronic uh, case of, of immune um, activation and usually come in afterwards. So in sort of more of a chronic state or a recovering state, monocytes will be elevated. Eosinophils and basophils are ele elevated in, in parasites, elevated in allergies and that type of thing. And then just the top of this list here, red blood cell count, hemoglobin, hematocrit, MCV, MCH, MCHC. This is uh, sort of what we call the red blood cell indices, very, very important for sleuthing out anemia. And I think one of the, the things to remember about anemia, anemia is a symptom or a sign. It's, you have to qualify it. It's not good enough just to say, oh, I'm anemic. You have to qualify what type of an anemia are we looking at. So I do go in, uh, in my training, uh, I do go into a lot of the differences between you know, hyperchromic versus a hyperchromic anemia, a microcytic versus a macrocytic anemia, and that type of thing. Uh, can be very helpful in sleuthing up B12 deficiencies, uh, iron deficiency anemia, and that type of thing. Platelets uh, obviously play a role in blood clotting, but can also help us with um, uh, oxidative stress and that type of thing. RDW is a calculated measurement of just sort of the, the average size of a red blood cell. And usually, if it's increased, uh, will will only be increased if, uh, no, put it this way, its increase is only uh, important if there is an anemia in the body. So that's kind of your very basic panel. Um, and you can take this list and go approach your lab and say, I want to get a, a price quote on just this panel here. And then, you know, you can add elements as you're seeing. For instance, if you're thinking that your patient has blood sugar issues, Add a hemoglobin A1C, add a fasting insulin, add a DHEA sulfate. Um, that will sort of round out uh, looking at uh, blood sugar issues. You could also add in a C-peptide. You could add in a fructosamine if you really wanted to drill down to the blood sugar issues. If you're looking at uh, creating what I call a comprehensive anti-aging panel, this is a panel for anyone over the age of 35. You're going to want to add in these elements. You're going to want to add in high-sensitive C-reactive protein. That's the cardio-CRP. It's a much more sensitive inflammation marker than the generalized CRP. They're very different. They are measuring sort of the same thing, but the HSCRP, I believe, is, is a lot more important to look at. Homocysteine, fibrinogen, DHEA sulfate, total testosterone, free testosterone, estradiol, and then obviously if you're male patients, only the PSA. So that would really round out if you uh, did uh, pretty much everything on this page, uh, you, you'd have a really good comprehensive anti-aging panel. If you're um, wanting to rule out iron deficiency or anemia issues, you can add the TIBC or the total iron binding capacity with the percent transferrin saturation rate and add that to the iron and ferritin, and along with a CBC, you're going to have a pretty good tool 
to be able to uncover hidden um, iron deficiency anemia issues in your patients. And actually in my book I go through a table of how you can use these three, percent transfer and saturation, TIBC and total iron, and depending on whether they're up or down or normal, it can actually mean various different things. So if, if you have my book, there's a nice table that you can use with that. If you're really wanting to drill into the thyroid, and as I mentioned earlier, it's like, you know, even just having the TSH isn't really good enough. The prices on these have come down significantly because they're just being run so much. The back in the old days to put free T3 and free T4 was just really uh, expensive. So rounding out your thyroid panel would be free T3, total T3, free T4, total T4, T3 uptake and reverse T3. It's going to give you a really good uh, panel. And finally, on um, these two next columns here, this would be my ultimate all elements comprehensive cover all my bases panel. And that's pretty much every single one of these. Um, and that's kind of the list there. Uh, so hopefully that is helpful to you um, in terms of adding elements. You know, the, one of the things that I always get is, well, what about this new test? What about this new, well, should I add in folate? Should I add in vitamin B12? Yeah, sure, absolutely, add them in. So do you necessarily need to run that on every single patient? Maybe, maybe not. Um, so, uh, yeah, there are, there are, of course, always many, many new tests coming out. But this is kind of your bare bones, just comprehensive panel that probably won't cost you uh, a huge amount.